the legendary Intel Core i7-920, the 10-year-old Bloomfield LJ1366 CPU, Intel's very first Core i7 processor along with slightly higher clocked models. It's a quad-core with hyper-threading, meaning we get 8 threads here, just like we do with more modern CPUs, such as the 6700K or 7700K. That fact alone makes this i7-920 from 2008 quite interesting. What can we do with it nowadays in 2018? Thanks a lot to Stefan Miller, who kindly sent me over this legendary platform to test out. As for the motherboard, I've got this pretty beefy MSI X58 Pro eBoard. Also, Stefan has already included a total of 20 gigabytes of DDR3-1333 RAM. And yes, for those of you still remembering this monstrous platform, it made use of triple channel memory. These days, we're still counting on dual channel. Looks like triple channel didn't really take off, but we actually made it to quad channel on those high-end platforms. Being a 2008 CPU, the clock speed are understandably not that high. The TDP on the other hand is. Luckily these processors were pretty good overclockers, which is why I initially planned on overclocking this Bloomfield chip to something like 3.7 GHz, hopefully with that Arctic Freezer 13 CPU cooler Stefan kindly included. However, I never got to that since the board's BIOS was behaving very strangely. The BIOS version installed didn't save changes I made to the settings regarding the overclock. Yes, I tried flashing a different BIOS, but those BIOS files just didn't want to get detected on my USB drives. I tried doing it in Windows, no luck either. Long story short, I tried almost everything, nothing seemed to work out. So I skipped the overclocking part completely and only ran the 920 at stock speeds. Also, I had to relocate the RAM to the black slots in order to make this system post. For the testing, I'm pairing this i7-920 up with my GTX 1070. Now these are the results. To be honest, by no means would I have expected this kind of performance. All in all, this 10-year-old i7-920 still can be considered a decent CPU, even in 2018. Sure, it's outdated in technology and features, but it still has impressive performance to offer. However, as it turns out, you better shouldn't be looking for good rendering power here. While beating more modern dual-core i3s, compared to low-end CPUs we have in 2018, models like the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G or even i3-8100 by Intel are hands down beating this once very powerful i7-920 in that aspect. Surprisingly, despite the fairly low single core performance, this 2008 Bloomfield chip pretty much is on par with the AMD FX8350 released in 2012 and can more or less keep up with today's low-end models in one game or another. However, this also means the gaming performance in 2018 is not looking too good. 
which doesn't mean you can't game though. And then there of course always are some exceptions. In The Witcher 3 as well as Battlefield 1 for instance, the results are still looking remarkably good. The power consumption in general isn't even that shocking either. Yeah sure, compared to the performance we're getting, it's tremendously high, but when just looking at the watt meter, you're drawing about as much power from the wall as a 1700x or 8700k does. It's the higher power draw on idle that might be a little concerning. However, one thing you probably should keep in mind is that you're missing out on some cool technologies that obviously weren't introduced on this 10 year old platform yet. Things like USB 3.0, PCI Express 3.0, SATA 3 or 6 gigabit per second. This is what I find to be a real downside. We kinda take SATA 6 gigabit per second for granted nowadays, but watch out, this board only comes with 3 gigabit per second ports. While SSDs still give us a nice speed boost on this platform, Form, you won't be able to make use of such a drive's full potential. At the end of the day, the Core i7-920 is still a decent CPU. However, you better not be a power user. If you do lots of gaming, want the best frame rate, want to render videos and whatnot, you maybe should consider getting a slightly newer CPU. But if you want to build a cheap used high-end system from 10 years ago and use it for lighter stuff nowadays, the i7-920 still holds up nicely. Truly a legend. Thanks again Stefan for sending me this platform to test out. And with that said, thanks for watching.